Hi everyone, I'm Owen. What I'm about to tell you happened when I was in the 8th grade. It was a really difficult year. I'm sure you'll be shocked and a little freaked out when you hear my story. Because it sounds like something straight out of a horror movie. But there's nothing to be afraid of. At the end of the video, you'll see that there's a rational explanation for all the supernatural stuff that I went through. But first, a little reminder, if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to this channel now. This way, you'll be the first to know when we upload new videos. And please don't forget to like the video if you find my story interesting. When I was in junior high, two things really bothered me, my height and my voice. My friends sounded older since most of them had started puberty, but I still sounded like a little kid. I would check my voice first thing in the morning when I woke up, and each time I'd be bummed out that it hadn't changed. It seems funny now how upset I was about something like this, but I was really hung up on it at that time. I was also really upset that I wasn't getting taller fast enough. I was one of the shortest kids in my grade. My friends had suddenly shot up. I knew I couldn't make my voice any deeper, but I thought I should be able to do something about my height. I googled, how can I make myself grow taller? I clicked on every single link that came up. Playing sports, especially basketball, was a common recommendation. I saved my allowance to buy a basketball hoop and a ball. Normally, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to sports, but this time I was really motivated. I really wanted to grow taller. I was going to do whatever I could to become as tall as my friends so they'd stop looking down on me. After coming home from school, I would change my clothes and play basketball for hours. At the time, the only sign that I had started puberty was a huge increase in my appetite. No matter how much I ate, I still felt hungry. It was as if I had a deep hole inside me and I was trying to fill it. My family also noticed my insatiable hunger. I was the first to sit down at the dinner table and the last to get up. After dinner, I would go to the kitchen every 10 minutes to look for a snack. When I started overeating, my mom began to hide food from me. I found out about it later. One day when I came home, I noticed the house was smelling like cake. I got really excited and ran to the kitchen. I asked my mom, did you bake a cake? It smells amazing. My mom said, no, I didn't bake anything. The smell must be coming from the neighbors. I believed her because my mom had never lied to me about stuff like this. Mm. That whole day, the smell kept driving me crazy. It was all I could think about. At night, after everyone had gone to bed, I decided to check where it was coming from. Do you know where I found the cake? Inside the laundry machine? I was thrilled like a pirate who'd just found the treasure. I kept eating piece after piece until I finished the whole cake. When my mom saw it the next morning, she was pretty angry. It turned out that her friends were coming over. She made the cake for them. She wasn't able to save it from me even though she hid it really well. When my dad found out, he said mockingly, one person can't eat so much cake by himself. There's definitely one more person inside you. Let's give him a name. How about Ian? This Ian joke went on for a long time. At dinner, when I would ask my mom, can I get one more plate of this? My dad would say, Owen is full. Now it's Ian's turn. He needs to eat too. Even though it bugged me a little at first, I got used to it eventually. I began to ask my mom, is there enough left for Ian when I wanted more food? One night, I woke up soaked in sweat. I'd had the scariest dream. This hand was coming out of my mouth as I was eating. It was holding a fork saying, me too, me too, in a raspy voice. It was the first time I would dreamt of Ian, the person who lived inside me. I was so relieved when I realized it had only been a dream, but the next night Ian was in my dream again. This time he was trying to push his head through my mouth. At the same time he was screaming, give me food, give me food, in that weird voice of his. I woke up gasping for air. The next morning, when I talked about my dream, my dad said, it sounds like you can't feed Ian enough. He's coming for you in your dreams, and laughed. <laughs> the following night, I saw Ian yet again. But this time it wasn't a dream. Yes, I saw Ian in real life. After I brushed my teeth, I felt something in my mouth. I looked in the mirror. I saw a pair of eyes looking out. You heard that right, I said a pair of eyes. Ian was looking at me from inside my mouth. You have no idea how scared I was. I couldn't run and tell my parents about it because it was ridiculous. I was so scared, I couldn't fall asleep for a long time. Finally, I convinced myself that I had dreamt it. That's how I calmed down and was able to fall asleep. Unfortunately, I started seeing Ian even more frequently after that. Sometimes I'd hear his voice too, 
He was constantly asking for food. When I'd wake up in the morning, I would check inside my mouth with my phone's camera to see if he was still there. And when I'd see those scary eyes, I would immediately close my mouth. Now, I was sure Ian was real and he lived inside me. I knew my parents would think I was crazy, but I decided to talk to them anyway. When I told them what was happening, at first they laughed. But when they realized this was no joke and I was dead serious, they panicked. My dad said, that can't be happening. I made a silly joke and it went on for too long. It's all my fault. Let's not talk about this ever again, he said. To convince them, I said, look inside me. You will see Ian for yourself and opened my mouth. My mom said, Owen, I'm getting worried. Please don't talk like this. When I insisted, she had to take a look. But she didn't see anything. Unfortunately, I was the only one who could see Ian. The next day, we were in the waiting room in a hospital. Without wasting any time, my dad got an appointment with a psychiatrist, that is, a mental health doctor. The doctor asked me many questions. He didn't comment on whether what I was seeing was real or imaginary. He just kept nodding and taking notes. I later found out that the doctor told my parents, Owen is, of course, hallucinating. However, apart from the hallucination, he doesn't have any other symptoms of a specific mental disorder. Mm -hmm. There must be another reason for this. We can't start treatment before we identify what that is. And he asked us to come back in three days after he had done some research. Nothing changed in my life in those three days. I kept seeing Ian inside my mouth. He was asking for food all the time. I was eating huge amounts of food to satisfy him. I had begun to eat enough for three or four people. Perhaps there were other people inside me in addition to Ian. When we went to the psychiatrist again, there was another doctor with him. That doctor's specialty was neurology. That means he treats diseases of the brain and the nervous system. He examined me as well. He made me tell him my story. Did you recently get hit in the head? He asked. After the examination, they put me inside a huge machine and scanned my brain. We'd get the results the next day. They wanted us to be at the hospital early in the morning. The next day when we arrived, we saw that there was another doctor in the room alongside the psychiatrist and the neurologist. His specialty was disorders of the stomach and the digestive system. He examined me like the others had done. Then he wanted to run some lab tests on me. You're curious about what happened, right? When you find out what my issue was, you'll realize it had something to do with all three doctors. Let me tell you what it is before I drive you crazy. Guys, I had a 20-foot-long tapeworm living in my intestines. Tapeworm is a parasitic animal that lives in the small intestine. These worm-like creatures feed on everything that we eat. This was the reason I was eating so much. Because I was sharing everything I ate with these worms, I was always hungry. So is Ian, the person who lives inside me, real? Of course not. The worms laid eggs inside my intestines and some of those eggs went up to my brain. When the eggs hatched, the larva or the baby tapeworm were released. I began seeing hallucinations because of the larva in my brain. My brain turned my dad's Ian joke into a character and began projecting that to me as if it was real. I'm so lucky I got cured thanks to these three doctors. The tapeworms in my intestines were the specialty of the digestive system specialist, the larva going to my brain the specialty of the neurologist, and my hallucinating the specialty of the psychiatrist. The worms in my intestines and the larva in my brain were surgically removed. I don't have any health problems anymore. I found out that eating raw or rare meat is how tapeworms enter the body. I probably got it from rare meat. My dad often makes barbecue in our backyard. I always eat the meat rare because it's more tender. Apparently, once, when the meat was really rare, the tapeworm eggs must have entered my body. After this, I will be much more careful. By the way, for those who are wondering, I did get taller. As you can hear, I also don't sound like a kid anymore, and I don't eat as much as I used to. Now, it sounds really funny that I believe there was a person living inside me. The brain is an extraordinary organ, extraordinary enough to show you something that doesn't exist. If someone else was telling me all this, I might not have believed them. But it's all true because I lived through it. Thank you for listening to my story. Hi, I'm Raj. I'm 14 and this is my new house. It's a lot, right? Like, this is not what normal houses look like. My story is all about how I found a secret passage in our new house. And I can't wait to tell you what I found in there. When I was younger, we lived in a tiny apartment in the city. There was enough room for me, mom and dad, but then my sister came along. And then my brother.
I was pretty excited when my mom told us that she had a new job at a university and we would be moving into a much bigger house, which was great. But when I realized that it meant I would also be moving schools, not so great. Still, I would be getting my own room and hopefully making new friends. So I tried to see it as an adventure. We packed all our stuff into a moving van and drove here. When she first saw the house, my sister was so scared she burst into tears. Mom said, what's the problem? It's a huge house with a fantastic garden for you to play in. My sister said, it's dark. My brother said, it looks like it's going to fall down and crush us. I was like, Mom, it's going to be hard enough being the new kid in school without being the kid who lives in the weird, spooky house. Dad tried to cheer everyone up and said, come on, everyone. It just needs some work to make it cozy. Just then, a ball came over from the house next door, and that's how I met Tim and Eddie. Tim is my next-door neighbor. He said, uh, can we get our ball back? I was like, sure. Hi, I'm Raj. I'm moving in. Eddie, his friend, said, yeah, pretty brave. <laughs> and they both laughed, like they knew something I didn't. I wish I had some of my old friends with me to back me up. Tim said, Eddie, don't say anything. He can find out for himself. But I already guessed there must be rumors about such a weird-looking house. So I was just like, spill it. What happened in my house? Tim tried to scare me with a story about how a magician used to live there and do weird spells and things. He said the magician died in the house, but his body was never found. Eddie was like, Tim, if his body was never found, how do they know he died? Eddie insisted instead that he'd heard a group of nuns used to live in the house. But one day, they all turned into enormous black crows and flew away. Just then, Tim's mom came over. She scolded Tim and Eddie. Boys, don't be telling the new neighbor any of your silly stories. The nuns moved to Canada, and that magician retired to the south of France. The house was just rented by students at the university. Tim and Eddie were like, yeah, basically no one's ever going to want to come to your weird house. And I didn't want to be known as the boy with the weird house, so I said, yeah? Shame. You'll miss out on seeing all the cool stuff that's still in there. Unless you're just too scared to come in, I said. Tim said he wasn't scared of anything, so I said, okay, come in then. If you dare. The house smelled weird and creaked a lot. And not all the lights worked. So basically, it was as spooky on the inside as it had been on the outside. We looked through some of the old junk and found loads of playing cards and posters for a show by Maximo the Magnificent. So a magician had lived in my house. But not a magician who did weird spells. One who did magic shows. Lame, said Tim. I was so annoyed, I wanted something that would make Tim and Eddie think me and my house were cool. <gasps> ghosts! Yes! Now that would impress Tim and Eddie. I told them it must be a ghost. But I realized it was just my brother and sister exploring the house. <laughs> but then, there was a weird moaning sound from the next room, like, Ooh. It happened again. Ooh. And Tim freaked when I said I was going to open the door. Eddie shrieked, please don't open the door. But I didn't really believe in ghosts, so... Ah! Eddie shrieked, it's the nuns. They're going to turn us into crows. The figure moaned again. Oh. But I just shrugged and said, dad, enough already. You're so cringe. My dad took the cloak off and laughed at us. <laughs> just came to tell you there's pie if you want some. Eddie and Tim were like, this is lame, we're out of here. My first shot at impressing my new friends, and now they just thought my house was full of rubbish and my family were cringe. So Tim and Eddie went to leave. We found room after room of old junk and dust. Eddie was like, dude, how do we get out of your house? But I didn't know. It was so dumb, I was lost in my own house. We found a dark room full of old books. Eddie was like, books, really cool man, really cool. I was like, whatever. I leaned against the bookcase. Then, without warning, the bookcase swung open. Eddie and Tim were amazed. There was some kind of secret passage in my house. I wasn't so sure about going in, but I finally had something to impress my new friends with, so I wasn't going to turn it down. It was super dark. I took the lead, but Eddie and Tim weren't far behind. We went down so far that I guess we must be under the house. We came to a dark corridor. Tim said that smugglers used to live in this area hundreds of years ago, and maybe it was an old smuggling tunnel. 
Eddie said everyone knew that they dug huge tunnels here for the local power plant, and not all of them were used. They started arguing. But I was like, guys, guys, there's someone down here with us. Tim and Eddie laughed. They thought it was my dad again. But then, they got closer. There were three other people in the tunnel. I took one step forward, and the person in the corridor also took a step forward. I took a step back. They took a step back. I thought about what would make someone want to live in the dark down here. Maybe it wasn't a person. Maybe it was some kind of monster. I raised my torch to get a better look. And I saw my own face. There wasn't anyone in the secret passageway. It was a mirror. I was like, guys, 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 it's okay. Tim went behind the mirror for a closer look. It was some kind of magician's <laughs> trick. But Eddie and Tim were happy that I had finally been as terrified as they had been. Just then, we heard Tim's mom's voice and smelled her pie. Guys, I said, the tunnel must lead to the kitchen. You can be out of here in no time. And to my surprise, Eddie said, let's have some pie. I'm starving. And Tim said, yeah, then we can explore the rest of the house. We hurried along, hoping there would still be some pie. And then, I saw something in the tunnel. I was like, wait, stop! It was a human skeleton! Eddie and Tim called out, Maximo the Magician! And I just... Aah! And you didn't have to have Tim's mom's supersonic ears to hear that. Dad called out, What's wrong? Are you hurt? And I was like, There's a dead body in our new house! We have to get out of here. Wait, said Dad. That doesn't look like bone. Tim was like, the medical students and their Halloween tricks. Oh yeah, said Eddie. Last year they dug a pit outside the house so everyone fell in. Yeah, said Tim. And the year before that they made the doorbell into screaming sounds. <laughs> that was so funny. Medical students. Why didn't anyone tell me? Then my dad was like, okay, that's enough standing around in the passageway. Time for pie. <laughs> so even though my house is weird and spooky, it did help me to make new friends. Did you enjoy my story? Have you ever found a secret passage? What did you find? Do let me know in the comments. And if you need to move to a new house and go to a new school, just think. You probably won't have to deal with a skeleton in a secret passageway. In the end, my spooky house turned out to be a normal house just like any other. Hi everyone! My name is Alex. If you have an attic in your house, you might look at it differently after the story I'm about to tell you. I've always had a thing for horror movies. Even when I was a kid, I used to secretly watch horror movies after my parents went to bed. Of course, I would have trouble sleeping afterwards. The ones that got me the most were the haunted house movies. I would even feel sad because we lived in an apartment. I thought, I wish we lived in a house. Then maybe we would have stuff like this happening in our house too. Years later, my wish came true and I came to realize it wasn't something to wish for. It had only been a few weeks since we moved into our current house. We started living in a single family home just like I'd been dreaming of, but I wasn't expecting scary things to happen, because I was old enough to know haunted house stories weren't real. Around that time, my parents won an amazing vacation in a charity raffle. They were going on a luxury cruise that would take them to 15 countries. This vacation was the big prize in the raffle. Normally, my folks could never have gone on an expensive trip like this. Still, they were hesitant at first. They only won two tickets. I wouldn't be able to go with them. To convince my parents to go, I told them, I'm 17 now. I'm starting college next year. You need to learn to trust me. You have to accept that I'm a grown-up now. They agreed with me. <laughs> so this is how I got to stay home alone for so long for the first time in my life. By the way, our house has three floors. The top floor is the attic. My room is below it. It has that little hatch in the ceiling which you open to go up into the attic. I had no idea what the attic even looked like. I'd never gone up there since there was no ladder. It was the evening after my parents had left. I'd gotten up really early to say goodbye to them, so I fell asleep even before eating dinner. I woke up hungry in the middle of the night. Just as I was thinking, I need to get up and get a snack, I heard some noises coming from the ceiling, or rather from the attic. It sounded like someone was walking, but I couldn't really tell because I was still half asleep. I listened closely. Yes, someone was definitely walking. Then I heard another noise. 
It was as if something was being dragged across the floor. I was super scared. Next came something like the sound of a small chain jangling. I jumped out of bed and ran downstairs. Could this house be haunted? I knew it was a ridiculous thought, but it was the only thing on my mind as I was running. After I made it downstairs, I held my breath and listened again. I couldn't hear anything from there. It was too far away. I thought, hmm. should I call the police? But this was a very old house. It could be a big mouse up there, or even the sound of the floorboards expanding. If the cops came and they couldn't find anything and then my parents found out about this, they would say, we thought you were a grown-up. You heard sounds and called the police on your first night? And they wouldn't trust me again. I decided not to call the police, but because I was nervous, I couldn't get any sleep. I sat listening to what was going on upstairs. How would I spend 15 days alone in this house? I was working part-time in a store to keep myself busy during the summer break. I got off work at 4 p.m. When I came home, I decided to climb up into the attic to check out if anything weird was going on. But how was I supposed to get up there? Did we have a ladder? Yes, we did. I found a small ladder in the garage. I brought it to my room. It was tall enough for me to reach the ceiling. I opened the hatch. I climbed up and looked inside. It was the first time I was seeing the attic. It looked like my parents had never gotten up there either. Everything was covered in dust. There were untouched spider webs everywhere. I couldn't see too far into it since it was darker in the corners. I turned on my phone's flashlight and held it there. There was no trace of a human being having been up here last night. I figured I probably wasn't fully awake and thought the sounds in my dream were real. I was so relieved after seeing the attic, it was pointless to worry now. I even watched a horror movie to prove to myself that I wasn't scared. And I went to sleep after finishing the movie. I slept like a baby all night. When I woke up in the morning, the only thing I thought of was... What am I having for breakfast? I spent the following day without any problems. My concerns about the attic had completely vanished. That is, I thought they had. I wasn't working on the weekends. I woke up pretty late that Saturday. When I went into the bathroom, I noticed the light was on. I was thinking, I must have left it on, when I saw a shiny ring on the floor. Where did it come from? I picked it up. It looked very expensive. There was no way a ring this expensive could have been my mom's. Suddenly, I felt my blood curdle. I thought it had been a guy, but what if it had been a woman in the attic that night? Did she come back while I was asleep and walked around the house this time? But the only way to the attic is through my room. It would have been impossible for someone to get in or out without waking me up. I couldn't think of a reasonable explanation at that moment. All I could say was, this doesn't make any sense. There was nothing to steal here, but I still quickly checked the house. Everything seemed in its place, or was I completely wrong? Could it be that someone came to visit my mom and dropped their ring? But I'd been using that bathroom for the past week. Surely I would have seen a ring this big. I wasn't able to figure it out yet, but there was something going on. I made a plan, but it wasn't something I could pull off on my own. I called my best friends, Luke and Matt. I told them it was something very important and asked them to come over for the night. When they came, I told them all about what had happened. Matt had a relative who worked at a jewelry shop. He took a picture of the ring and sent it to her. She told him, I'd need to see it in person, but it looks like a diamond ring expensive enough to cover your and your sister's college tuition. Luke had made fun of me at first, but after hearing that, he was also convinced that something <gasps> weird was going on. We waited until it got really late. Then we started executing our plan. I have a small tripod. I started a live stream from the YouTube app on my phone. I set up the phone on the tripod. I climbed up the ladder and opened the hatch. I placed the tripod with the phone attached to it on the floor of the attic. There was no lamp in the attic, but the moonlight coming in through the roof provided enough light. Next came the second phase of the plan. We went down into the basement just in case. We started watching the live stream from my laptop. More than an hour passed. We were glued to the screen, but nothing was happening. We all got tired and sleepy from staring at the nothingness. I had to find a solution. I thought we could stay awake if we played a board game. I went up to my room. Just as I was picking up the game, I heard a noise from the attic. I held my breath and listened. It wasn't as clear as it was that first night, but there was definitely some kind of movement up there. I left the game there and ran to my friends in a panic. When I got downstairs, I saw that they were both sitting with their eyes closed. They had fallen asleep. I said, wake up. There's someone in the attic trying to keep my voice down. We all looked at the screen at the same time. We all saw it. A shadow was moving in the attic. It wasn't close to the hatch. It was further away, 
Luke said, This doesn't look like a woman. But the attic was so dark it was impossible to tell for sure. It was time for phase three of the plan. Calling 911. We couldn't look away from the screen. We weren't scared because there were three of us. But could this man or woman be armed? I nodded toward the front yard. Let's call them from outside, I said. If anything happened, it will be easier to run away. There was a police station nearby. A few minutes after we called 911, we were in the front yard staring at the screen with two cops. They were also sure there was someone in the attic now. They debated whether to ask for backup. One of the cops said, we could lose them while waiting for backup. They turned on their flashlights. They went into the house very carefully. We were very excited to be watching it all live via YouTube. We were expecting an operation like in the movies, but it didn't turn out that way. We'd left the ladder we used to go up into the attic there. The cops used it to climb up. On the screen, we first saw the light from the flashlight and then the head of one of the cops. The attic was now fully lit. Right in the corner, a man stood completely frozen. There was a bag in front of him. The officer yelled, Police! Sit down where you are! Put your hands above your head! The man did as he was told without saying a word. So, who was the man in the attic? And more importantly, what was he doing up there? According to the police, this man was the most brilliant thief in town. He only broke into rich people's houses and stole only jewelry. His sister had lived in our house about 10 years ago. Whenever he came to visit her, he climbed the tree next to the house to get into the attic. He made a secret compartment inside a wall. He was keeping some of the jewelry he stole in there. One day when he decided to stop being a thief, he was planning to sell his hidden jewelry stash and start a new life in another country. However, he got caught in a wealthy person's house in the middle of a burglary. He had been in jail for years. He finished serving his sentence the previous week. The first thing he did after being released from prison was visit his hiding place. Which is our attic. This guy was taking some of the jewelry from the attic and selling it piece by piece. If he sold it all at the same time, the mafia would have heard about it since it was stolen. As you might have guessed, the ring I found in the bathroom was his too. That night when he came to pick up jewelry, he had to use the toilet really badly. The guy is the smartest thief in town. He spent his whole life breaking into other people's homes. So he was really comfortable entering our house from the attic and using our bathroom. He must have dropped the ring as he was pulling up his pants. I didn't want to upset my parents, so I told them everything only after they came back. Naturally, they were really shocked, but they were more upset that I had to go through this while they were away. 